Hey everyone, welcome to Armchair Technician. Today we're going to be looking at a really old amp from the 1940s. My grandfather was fighting the Nazis in Italy when this amp was produced. This is a 1942 Gibson Mastertone, so we're definitely going to take a moment for a little bit of history on this one. The Gibson Company introduced the Mastertone line in the late 1920s offering banjos and other fretted instruments. The products were mostly sold by mail order through catalogs and magazines. In the early 40s, the company branched out and started offering electric instruments as well, and packaged small amplifiers along with their lap steel guitars as a matching set. You could get a brand new instrument and the accompanying amp for about $100 with cables included. That's about $1,600 in today's economy. The amp we're looking at today, the Master Tone Special, was manufactured from 1940 to 1942, and it's definitely showing its age. Although the handle and original tubes are long gone, it still has its original speaker, transformers, and switch with the original chicken head knob intact as well. As we look closer, we can see various signs of neglect and dodgy repair work, but overall the amp is not in terrible shape for being 76 years old. We're going to do our best to bring this elder statesman back to life. All right, so upon first inspection of this 1942 Master Tone, um, we've obviously had somebody in here before trying to replace some components. These are the electrolytic capacitors that are in the power section. They're just kind of floating around in here. The original one was a can cap that was in this frame right here, but that's been cut out. It's not being used. Actually, all the electrolytics have been replaced. This one here, and this one that's in the input. They also tried to install a three-prong power cord, but then when they got in here, they did not even hook up the ground wire to anything so the ground wire is just floating around inside a uh, couple th couple other things these resistors appear to be original this big brown one here as well as this one and this looks to be original too this is a capacitor all the hookup wire looks to be original as well all these uh, cloth wound hookup wires and the tubes as well, they're at least really old. I don't know if they're original, but they look really old and crusty. The 6SJ7, the 6V6, and the 5Y3. This is the rectifier tube. Given the amount of dirt and rust that's on this transformer and chassis, I would venture to guess that this thing probably sat in somebody's wet basement or barn for 40 years plus. So the first thing I'm going to do is disconnect this transformer from everything and test it to make sure that it even still works. And then we're going to go from there. All right, now testing a power transformer can be somewhat daunting and scary, and it should be because you're testing uh, very high voltages, much higher than what come out of the wall in your house. So I've consulted this data sheet for the 5Y3 rectifier. So this is just a little diagram of what the pins do for the tube rectifier. Uh, it lists every single pin. For instance, pin 1 has no connection, as shown here. Pin 2 and 8 are the filament and pin 4 and 6 are the plates so those are up here now what I'm gonna do is um, look at how this tube socket is wired inside the amp and I'm gonna trace backwards to the transformer so I can see what taps are going to what pins and therefore I know what voltages to expect from those leads Okay, before we test the power transformer, we're going to test the switch. Now this on-off switch is also the volume control, which a lot of these old amps were like that. So I've set the meter up to check continuity, which means that things are connected. So the switch is in the off position now. So if the switch works, when I turn the knob on, 
the meter should beep. So let's check this out. All right. So theoretically, the on-off switch works. Okay, normally when you are testing a power transformer, especially in an amp as old as this one, you want to use something called a variac. It's a variable voltage regulator, allowing you to slowly ramp up the voltage from the wall so you don't hit the thing all at once with 120 volts. Because when these were designed, the voltage coming from the wall was about 110 volts, and it's been, like I said, sitting in a barn for 40 or 50 years, getting rusty, and we don't know what kind of condition this thing is in. I don't have a variac, so I'm going to test this transformer in a different way. It's not optimal. It's not actually safe. So I have to say it, please don't do this at home. Also make sure if your meter is not, this is an automatic meter, but you need to have it selected to AC because the voltage coming out of the secondary taps here are going to be AC. So I've double checked everything. I think we're good. I'm going to turn, flip the switch on this power strip and uh, hope for the best here. Alright, so apparently this transformer is absolutely dead. I've got 120 volts coming in for, to the primary right here and I've got alligator clips on the secondary, the high voltage from the secondary, which should be the high voltage, and I'm getting a reading of 0 .003 volts. I've tested this multiple times. This transformer is absolutely dead. It's no surprise that it doesn't work. Um, it has... It's kind of hard to tell in the video, but it looks like it's got, like, some kind of black tar all over it and then on the chassis underneath where it was bolted down it's got this thick layer of grime and almost like mud I know I said earlier this thing look, looks like it's been sitting in a barn but I think it might have been sitting at the bottom of a river this is the most disgusting thing I've ever seen I gotta say, I've never had to do this to an amp chassis before. I would love to know the story behind how this amp got this way. I gotta do this because I'm attaching a new power transformer. I just so happen to have this Hammond power transformer laying around my house. Somebody have, had given it to me about six years ago and I'm glad that they did because the voltages in the secondary taps of this transformer are right in line for what I need to replace the one that's coming out of this master tone. So that is a huge lucky break for me. So the holes in the chassis only line up on one side, unfortunately. So that means I'm going to probably have to drill some holes in the chassis, which I prefer not to do. But if this transformer ends up working out, then I don't mind. So before I go and make major unchangeable modifications to this chassis, I'm going to wire this thing up and just make sure that it's going to be the one. So I've got this new power transformer wired up. Um, I just did this super fast. That's why all the leads are so long. I didn't really want to take a whole lot of time because I wasn't even sure if this amp was going to work or not. Uh, so I'm going to have to go back and redress these leads. Uh, but what I'm going to do now is turn it on and just see if we're getting any sound at all out of the thing. I'm just going to turn the volume all the way up so we know where we stand here. All right, we've got a little bit of a 120 hertz hum. Got some noise. That's not unusual. 
not unexpected, but uh <laughs> Actually, this amp sounds freaking awesome. So now that we know that the amp works, like I mentioned before, I'm going to go back in here and clean up all these long leads. These don't need to be this long, obviously. Um, and we're going to address that 120 cycle hum that we're hearing. I have a feeling I know what's causing that. And I'm going to go ahead and replace... Um, a couple of these components that are original and are way out of value, such as this capacitor here. Alright, so we cleaned up the lead dressing on this power transformer. The yellow one is the heater supply for the rectifier tube. The green ones are going to the heaters of the power tube and the preamp tube, respectively. These are the primaries coming from the wall and then the secondary high voltage here in the red. This single red wire here is a center tap for the high voltage. Now one thing about this transformer, it did not have a center tap on the heater taps. So meaning that that wasn't grounded. So that was the hum in the amp that we were hearing a few minutes ago. And I'll show you what I did to eliminate that. And this is really hard to see in the video, but what I've done is the uh, heater tap, which is the green wires like I mentioned before, they are coming around to pins 2 and 7 on this uh, 6v6 tube socket here. So what I've done is I made an artificial center tap. So you take a 100 ohm resistor, which is this blue one here, and this one right here, and you solder them directly onto the tube socket then you wire them together in the middle here and I connected a wire that sends this to ground so what this does is it sends any stray current or a dirty AC sine wave uh, that causes electromagnetic radiation any, of, any number of things that's coming from the transformer that's not center tapped this little trick sort of takes care of that and I'm including a link at the bottom here uh, so you can do more research on this there's a really good website explaining how to get rid of hum that comes from heater supplies and in addition I also replaced uh, this resistor here this was a single resistor before I didn't have the exact value but I had close to half of the value so I just wired two in parallel there and then I also replaced this coupling cap and I wire tied these capacitors together here and also glued them down to the chassis with a little bit of silicone just so they don't float around inside here <laughs> This amp sounds really awesome, even though my cats hate it. Thanks for watching. Okay, well that wraps us up for today. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you again next time on Armchair Technician.